And I have to say, his range of knowledge, but not just the range, it's the depth. A lot of people, we have an expression in English, you say of many individuals, they're a mile wide, but an inch deep. Well, you know what? Dr. West is a mile wide and a mile deep. He does know the details. Obviously, we know right now, I mean, uh, the experts are saying there's widespread famine already in Gaza, uh, but instead of being outraged about that, there is a bipartisan revolt today against the ICC. Uh, what are your thoughts? Because it seems kind of outrageous uh, if the ICC uh, issues search warrants for Vladimir Putin, uh, you know, uh, maybe some uh, darker skinned leaders in Africa. I mean, the Democratic and Republican Party rejoice, but they're basically huffing and puffing that they will do sanctions or invade uh, the ICC. I mean, what does that say about our so-called democracy? Well, to be a little bit sober about this, the record of the ICC is so horrendous. A very senior uh, international expert, uh, whose name I'd rather not give because he'll end up causing him problems, he once said to me, the ICC is not a court. You know, the, it used to be called, the, not the International Criminal Court, but the International Caucasian Court because it only indicted African leaders. Probably each of the indictments was, were merited, was merited, but there's ample choices from the West, beginning with the architects of the invasion of Iran in um, 2003, when even, Co when even Kofi Annan, the Secretary General of the UN, when he was asked, he said, it was an illegal war. He used those words. It was an illegal war. Well, there was an illegal war, and the estimates are very high. It could be as many as a million people were killed. So there were ample persons to choose from the West to indict. So the record of the ICC is absolutely horrendous. If you ask me why they, why uh, Kareem Khan, the chief prosecutor, why he issued this statement, which still has to be confirmed by the judges in the court, um, I would say the pressure became probably unbearable. And he lost all credibility because every international agency, every international agency was saying that not only was there famine, but everybody from Joseph Burrell, the foreign policy chief of the EU, to the Secretary General of the UN, Gutierrez, to um, Human Rights Watch, and to a score of other individuals, they were all saying it's a man-made famine. Or as Beth Selim, the Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the Occupied Territories, put it about three weeks ago, they said it's a manufactured famine. Now, the only result of a manufactured or man-made famine can be mega deaths. Exactly how many people have already died? I think it's a very mysterious question. And I don't know if the numbers that we're being given right now are accurate. I'm dubious of the accuracy of the numbers, but in the face of that, it was very hard for Kareem Khan, who was being mocked for the past six months for doing nothing, it would have been very hard for him to stay silent. That being said, if you read his statement, it focused on the starvation issue and it was completely silent on, number one, the systematic attacks in hospitals, completely silent on the systematic attack on UN workers, completely silent on the systematic attack on journalists,
it was completely silent on the fact that 70% of the homes in Gaza have been pulverized, reduced to dust. Bomb it, bombing refugee camps. Uh, bombing refugee camps. There were many, many items that could have been listed in his indictment that weren't. Now, he claims there are ongoing investigations. Maybe so, but you know what? It's been already seven months. You had quite a lot of information to say there are reasonable grounds to conclude that Israel is systematically targeting not just the civilian population for starvation, but systematically targeting the population with its artillery and its bombs and systematically targeting the entire infrastructure, which includes the cultural heritage of Gaza, the libraries, the universities, the schools, all of it <coughs> demolished. As to what they said about Hamas in the indictment, I would say parts of it are correct. I would say it pales in comparison what Hamas did in October 7th to what Israel has done since October 7th. And I would say some of the charges, in my opinion, have no basis. In fact, I've studied the record quite closely. Um, Khan's statement included several references to the rapes that allegedly occurred. Remember, they were holding the senior Hamas leaders responsible for the rapes. There is, in my opinion, zero evidence that Hamas uh, uh, engaged in systematic or methodical um, rape. And I believe 60 journalism professors wrote a letter to the New York Times recently demanding they investigate that story they did. Yeah. And, um, even if you look at the report, which everybody is citing again by Pramila Patton um, on the issue of sexual violence, in my opinion, I've written on it. Uh, you can go to my Substack. There's, I have an article called Pramila Patton's Rape Fantasies. In my opinion, her report proves the opposite of what she claimed. She claimed that she's proving systematic <coughs> sexual violence but if you look at her actual evidence she found except for testimony she found no evidence she found no photographic evidence she found no digital evidence she found no forensic evidence and not a single survivor of the sexual violence stepped forward to be interviewed by her so I don't believe that charge is true, but the other side of the point, coin is 850 civilians were killed. A large number of them were not killed from crossfire. They were not killed by Israel by accident. No, there was a series of atrocities that occurred on October 7th. I do not believe the wise strategy is to pretend it didn't happen or to concoct some sort of conspiracy. I think the wise strategy is try to explain why it happened and not whether or not it did happen. Thank you for taking the time. The main threat is now coming, existential threat, is coming from the prospect of a terminal nuclear war. And on that front, honest people have to concede that President Biden and his administration have been a catastrophe be it with regard to Russia, be it with regard to Israel, be it with regard to Iran, all of these are terminal events waiting to happen. And on all three, oh, and I left out the most important, China, on Ukraine, Gaza, Iran, and China. These are terminal events 
waiting to happen and President Biden is accelerating, accelerating the move towards a terminal event waiting to happen. What Trump will do, I acknowledge, I can't predict. So it's a classic case of the fear of the known versus the fear of the unknown. But there's no doubt in my mind that on that particular front, namely the threat of nuclear war, he's a disaster.